Hello folks. Well, it's no secret that I love my Lou Andrews Aero Masters. It was one of my favorites when flying in the Malting Wing Nationals in the 70s at Omaha, Nebraska. Well, I had many for sure. Well, let me tell you a little bit about Lou Andrews. He was quite a guy and always kept his promises. You know, at the Multi-Wing Nationals, all the top winners received an Aero Master from him as one of the prizes. Well, at the last contest I flew in using the Aero Master, I won one. But at that time, there were none to be found as Lou's airplane manufacturing plant burned down. It was a sad day for AMCO. That's A-A-M-C-O that stood for Andrews Aircraft Manufacturing Company. But we all understood, so moved on to different planes. That's when I began flying the Bill Evans X-Wings at that contest, which conjured up a lot of controversy, I might add. <laughs> I was working for Kraft RC Systems at the time in the Signature Series Engineering Department, Vista, California. You know, Phil Kraft was the inventor, along with Jerry Pullen, of the very first digital proportional radio control systems. Well, one day while I was at work, a box showed up for me. It was a brand new Aeromaster II, that's T-O-O, which Lou sent me. He wrote a note saying it was sorry it took so long to get it to me. Now this was two years after I won it. Now that is dedication to the modeler and I'm never going to forget that. Well today I'm flying an original Aero Master that I got from John Donovan at Donovan's Hobby and Scuba Center in South Dakota. As you saw in past videos, I updated the receiver and transmitter, added a sub-tank and an Enya 60 for power. The sub-tank was added because the original tank had to be changed. So let's talk about the clunk tanks of the past and today's versions. In the 70s, clunk tanks came with surgical tubing inside. This was extremely flexible so much that the clunk would find any part of the tank as it was designed. We pilots also knew that sometimes the clunk would fall and sit at the front of the tank on a hard or rough landing. For that reason, just to make sure, we all got used to holding the plane nose up and shaking it a bit to make sure the clunk fell to the back of the tank. It was normal practice for pattern flyers. But today's tanks come with silicone tubing instead of surgical tubing. In these tanks, the tubing is not flexible enough for the clunk to actually fall to the front of the tank like the surgical tubing. So in long dives or spins, the clunk actually sticks up in the air and not in the fuel like this picture shows. When it came time to throttle up in a long dive like a pullout from a three-turn spin, it would have lots of air in the line and the engine could quit when you punched it. And this even was worse if you had low fuel in the tank. Well here as you can see I'm holding the uh, silicone fuel with the weight on the tank and you see it's not, it won't even fall down at all. It's too stiff and this is the size you need in order to run a 60 size nitro engine. That should be easy enough for you to see. The reason clunk tank manufacturers stopped using surgical tubing because of the price and because over time it disintegrated from the fuel and in planes like the Aeromaster replacing or even getting close to the tank was a chore. So many of us, and especially when the RC Extreme aerobatic helicopters became prominent, we all began adding the sub-tank. The sub-tank draws fuel from the larger tank and always remains fuel with no air ever reaching the engine so it allowed the engine to always have fuel no matter what the attitude of the machine. They work really well. I have one on my giant J3 Cub, my Nitro helicopters, and of course this Aeromaster. Even my Nitro-powered Byron F-16 had a feeder tank as stock setup, as you can see in the plans. It never flamed out for sucking air, I can tell you that for sure. <laughs> well, as many of you know, I converted my F-16 to electric, but this is the actual tank that came with the kit. Byron called it the Sure Flow fuel system. So let's see how it flies, as I finally had a day recently to get it out. It still has the original Kraft Signature Series KPS-15 servos with carbon pop wipers that I built myself for John. Albeit they're not as fast as today modern servos, they're really strong. Normally you would build this feeder tank on the inside of the plane when you build it, but in this case it was already built, so I put it on the outside. No big deal, and it makes it easy to see how much fuel's in it.
drop it in. Good old arrow master. Never did I lose any fuel. That fuel tank is still full. Felt good. <laughs> 